I know I told you guys about this, so it shouldn't be some crazy surprise, but surprise, we're in Connecticut. So uh, I figured out that it was only like a nine hour drive, which turned out to be like more like 10 or 11 with uh, DC traffic up to Connecticut from VIR. So uh, I don't know the next time or if I would ever have the Porsche uh, close enough to Connecticut to where I would actually be willing to take it. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to shoot up here for a little while before the Lone Star event next weekend. And look who came with me, his first trip to Connecticut. Alberto! Why do you say my name in Jimmy's accent? <laughs> we gotta go visit Jimmy today. Yeah, we're matching too. We gotta go. Ma we gotta go say hi to Jimmy matching. Look at it. How cute. <laughs> so, uh, you guys will. I mean, it's probably in the title of this video, but you'll see why Alberto's here. And by that, I mean the real reason why Alberto's here is I bribed him with jet skis to come and hang out and help me work on cars. So, there's gonna be a lot of content over these next couple of days. I know that you're seeing this a little bit late since I'm running a little bit behind, but if you don't remember, uh, I'm fortunate enough to live on a nice lake. So, uh, we'll probably do water stuff tomorrow, but today we're gonna go hard, work on some cars. We get a little drive, had some breakfast sandwiches. Should I change or should we keep matching shirts? What do you think? Leave it? We got three trash cans, cause, uh, cause I'm trash. I don't know. You see my qualifying run? Those are all for me. It's not even like the roads where I live in Connecticut are the best. I enjoy them because obviously it's more entertaining than Florida. But just the idea of having my dream car where I grew up and being able to drive it around town and stop at all the places where I used to go when I was a kid is super cool. I'm excited. A little bit of history. This road right here, uh, back when I was younger, my dad used to take his prelude out here because it was one of the few roads that like didn't pass houses and didn't have any traffic. And we'd do zero to 60 runs in his prelude and I'd time him with a stopwatch when I was like 13. He had a great influence. Well, he was always good about teaching me to choose the right roads where I'd have spirited driving. Alberto's in heaven. I took him by Jimmy's shop. Jimmy O, the local tuner, putting all the tuners out of business, tuning your car for free. That's not me, doggy. Not anymore? Not anymore. No? Are you charging? Yeah. Yeah? Hey, Adam. Yeah. What? I'm, I'm talking you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jimmy's been doing a lot of tuning lately. Did oh, you... Okay. You're right at home right here, boy. What is this? <laughs> I just got away from those and now here I come. First shot we step in and here. this. Do you think? Put make a turbo manifold and Oh, so you just gotta take this and you just flip it around. <laughs> The Evo's actually been out here, uh, Jamie's been tweaking a little bit of stuff in the tune. We wound up switching the injectors because I had the wrong type before and that's why it wasn't really communicating and why I was having so many issues with cold start. Um, it's like the low impedance versus high impedance thing. So Jamie's just gonna tweak the fueling a little bit more once I give him the ignite that we brought up. And then I'm gonna grab the Evo and shoot over to Tommy's shop with it. For his first time driving the Porsche, I'm jealous. This thing doesn't have AC yet. We gotta swap ECUs and do a little bit of different fast. stuff. But uh, y'all drive fast. I'm excited to hear this thing from the outside. I've never heard it drive. Oh, it's gonna be a fun chase. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, uh, I guess, Ball lead I wonder run. if I should give him directions. Lead ball, I, lead. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if we can keep up. Okay. It looks so cool seeing the Porsche in my rearview mirror. I don't know if you guys will be able to see uh, the video, but it's just cool getting to see your other car being driven around. Alberto's never really driven it yet, so I'm excited to see what he thinks of it. We've been stuck behind a cop, so we haven't really been able to drive that spirited, but um, it's still, it's a, it's a cool car. This thing's good though, I miss this thing. I'm excited for the next version of it. What'd you think? It's good, right? Can I just be cheaper so I can get one? So were you going full throttle under the bridge where I pulled on you? No, I let go. Oh, you did? I thought that we were turning left right after the bridge. It's like, mm. oh, we're gonna stop. But dude, I, I backed out. It's like, oh, this thing would have had you. The Evo's pretty fast though, isn't it? Yeah. Hop in it real quick. I want to give you a ride before we take it apart. All right. Let's see what this whole Evo hype is all about. And Come on, you know, you know why Evo's are good. How fast this thing is. You haven't ridden in this thing since Jamie tuned it. It is a whole new car on the 85 with the Jamie sauce. It is? And it'll grip right up in this rain. Get ready for it, dude. It I mean, will I, grip I, on the rain. I feel like I walked here in the Porsche. I'm just saying. Ready? All right, let's send it. Hey, it's pretty quick. 
No, that's Come pretty on. quick, that's fine. <laughs> it's too quiet though. The only thing, you know, to be honest, I've actually the Porsche feels a lot faster. Really? Surprising I'm saying this, yeah. You were sick, but then after driving the Porsche for about 40 minutes, that thing is sick. Yeah, it's good. Now I see why why you like driving that thing around and just like down shifting and making little noises yeah. and everything. I was bummed though, I was gonna take you on a little back road, but then it started raining. I had like a little road we were gonna take when we got to the shop. I wanna see if you can keep up with the Evo. Bro. I would have been putting on your bumper. The thing about this is it just keeps pulling all the way to Redline. Yeah, you know? That's good. That's 4063 right there for you. And boost. So if you guys didn't recognize the location, we actually are at Tommy Effia's shop where I do most of the work on the Evo. And Alberto's gonna be helping me today basically pull everything off underneath the car and uh, we're gonna do some rust removal, which isn't really that bad on this car, but I wanna get it undercoated, uh, as you guys know. I did it myself on the R32, but I didn't do the best job. Tommy has a guy that undercoated his fender wells and he's gonna do the entire underbody of the Evo for me because I do wanna drive that car in the winter without worrying about it and uh, best way to do it, remove the rust and undercoat it just to protect it. So that way I don't have to worry about it. And uh, there's a reason why I'm kind of doing it now and you guys will see that more in the next video. Um, but the underbody is kind of just like uh, one of those things where I have stuff off, might as well. I'm excited to tear into this thing though. These gloves are all weird. <laughs> yeah, they kind of feel nice though, don't they? I feel like I'm doing a medical exam. Look how, man, Tommy's got how much tools. bigger my hand is on the gloves. Like I have like, what's it called? Like scales or something? Like, you know, some people like can't, Ford nice sockets. This Tommy guy is using junk sockets. Look at it. What is this? Matco? Sounds like it looks like, like the ones that Adam better. buys. Those no. blue ones that he gets from dude, the auto parts all the time. Harbor Freight, dude. Harbor Freight's where it's We at. have Harbor Freight ones on right now for the S15 and they Blues. work good. This, Blues. this blue socket sock. Yeah, so anyway. They're horrible. Don't buy them. First thing that's going on, uh, I'm going to take the wheels off and kind of like the first step of removing everything that we need to off this car. <laughs> what? Nothing else you said. This is a regular 17. Instead of that, this works. Thing. It was just that one, one leg. I think it's forever. I'm gonna secretly take all the other wheels off while he's driving. So Anyways, before I do that, we are taking the wheels off. Then we're gonna drain the fluid out of all the brake system so we can remove the brakes. And then we can remove the coilovers, followed by the rear differential, then take the sufferings off and the front suffering off. So let's see how that turns out. Oh, we need to take the exhaust and drive shaft off too. And the front differential, or transfer case. I think these are the lightest wheels I own. Pretty light, huh? It's so much nicer. It's lighter than a TE. The yeah, they're sick, aren't they? Yeah. I love them. Had to get a little bit of Orlando in the shop, so we got some reggaeton going on, feeling at home. I got the exhaust off this bad boy. I did not realize how heavy this thing was. I think most of the weight's in the muffler, but I'd love to do a tie exhaust on this car since I do actually care about weight, since this is gonna be more of like a uh, time attack style build. Um, but going underneath, um, I'll show you guys kind of the rust situation a little bit, but we've been going hard. Alberta's already got the drive shaft and the axles out, and we're gonna pull these subframes soon. Pull one of the shafts out. Alberto uses a, uh, a counterweight and a chain. But what's funny is um, I, Wait, why are you pulling the shaft out, Alberto? Does it need to come out? Yeah, so we also got the transfer case off. Ah, uh, so anyway, um, he uses counterweight. <laughs> and I'm like, Alberto, what do you want to use? He's like, find me a flywheel. Why a flywheel? It works. <laughs> do most people have a flywheel laying around, or is this your thing of choice? No, it works as a good counterweight. So if you give me the lightest flywheel ever. I mean. And one time I don't need a lightweight flywheel. It's like, oh, here it is. Like, okay. I, I can find you a heavier one. I make this wood. I'm excited to see this in action. Show me the way, sir. Oh, this is not heavy enough. There we go. <laughs> you're ridiculous. <laughs> Are you ready, Alberto? You really think you're gonna do this whole thing yourself? Is it not gonna be really heavy? No. Are the brakes really coming with it? No. Oh. Right 
wrong one. Right, please. I don't I have no idea. Wow, this is heavier than I thought. Oh my god. Oh, Holy <laughs> crap. Holy <sighs> crap. If someone feels a little past the And guess what? That's not going back in either. The man himself shows up first and he's like, dude, you gotta hear the GTR. You got some big cams in this? I wanna hear that lope. I heard it in the video. I, it's the map that's making it like. Dude, it makes it sound like you got a mega cam. <laughs> I mean, it has some pretty aggressive cams, but not like that. What, how big are they? Yeah, okay, I mean that's that's bigger than I, I usually run two six fours, so yeah. well, I guess my two J is a two seven two. That's sick. They're cool. Have you rip on her yet or not? No, I can't do anything until I scale that map. Just scale that map, dude. I got it. I want to do it tonight. Let's do it. You make it Tommy's over here blowing darts and distracting blowing. Alberto. Should I shoot that penguin up there? No, I bet, you, I bet that's what you want. Is that what you want up penguin? Yeah. Is that what you do in your vlogs now? I just like talk and shoot Tommy's penguin. I've literally been doing nothing but distracting us. <laughs> dude. What? Wait. This is gonna be the best part of the video. What? That. Oh, Cause you're in it? No, what he was just doing. Taking the corner out? Be careful with these nuts. Can I talk shit to you for a second on your own vlog? What? How can you bolt this shit back in on this nice, whatever you're doing? How could you, how could you bolt that shit to it? We're gonna come off a week turner right there. Dude, we literally have two days. I just can't, I just can't turn into a project that just sits for a year and that doesn't even get finished. It could. Talk. You talk, have enough cars, dude. Like you you don't. Spanked, you dude. don't need to fucking finish talk. this thing. You have enough cars. I, this is a functional thing. I'm not doing this to look pretty. Sit in a showroom and just talk about it. I'm doing it because <laughs> I don't want it to rust out. This dude's all for Reddit right, right now. I, this dude. is all for Reddit. <laughs> what does that even mean? What dude, is that? Dude, all for Reddit. Adam Reddit LZ. What are these other bolts for? Uh, uh, those, those are exhaust stuff. stuff. I'll put them with the exhaust. Are you cool? Yeah, I'm sick. As cool as AYC is, we are actually going to end up deleting it. Um, so this whole thing right here can get taken out. What do you think? It is 10 pounds maybe? At least. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of simplifies things a little bit more. I know it's nice as like in stock form, um, but pretty much everyone that tracks these things switches over to the RS diff, which in our case, every Evo ever sold in the States comes with an RS diff because we didn't get active yaw control. Um, and by the way, active yaw control is kind of like, correct me if I'm wrong, Tommy, it's um, like a hydraulic pump that basically tells it to, is it, does it, release one corner to let it kind of drive around so yaw is like I th is kind of like drifting i guess you know what i mean i thought so, basically it, it allows like one to slip so the other one can go while still kind of being an lsd but i've heard it acts up weird on track when you do kind of start sliding right and that's when it and it gets very unpredictable so um you'll see more tomorrow or the day after once you see like the next stage of the build why we're doing this um but uh just to explain i'm pulling the lines off right now uh, so I can start deleting all this stuff, but that's Tommy's old RS diff. What happened to your Evo? It's in the woods. No, we sold it. You sold your Evo? Yeah, but like, wh why is your... So we did what you're doing, what, you'll, what you're seeing here. Uh -huh. And well, we I... saw too much of like this. Rust? Not this. It was worse than this. And we said, no. Nah. So I know I've never used line wrenches before. These are the best things in the world. They're cool, right? Yeah, I'm jealous. How about all the never used them? <laughs> I didn't know we had those. Dude, I, I'd I use adjustable wrenches. I'm not everything in my little hardware but you'll be surprised. I would be surprised, he says. So Adam asked me for a hose cutter, and then I found out he had to cut something metal, and so I gave him that. This is a game changer. <laughs> That's the Rudnick tool, dude. Oh my god, that was literally... Alberto, give me seven of these. Seven? How about eight? That was sick. Of course the camera stops recording, but... <laughs> uh, we did get the diff out, it was a little tricky. But um, I guess in the ideal world we drop everything, but we don't have a nice way to do that, so we got it out, and we're getting there.
All right, I uh, missed taking the diff out, but subframe's about to come out. You need help lifting this one, Alberto? You got it. Uh, I'm not sure. If you want to hold one hand, one side just in case. So put a hand on this side just so like bounce it out. Okay. I don't know where it's gonna go. Got it. Got it. So regarding rust underneath, um, there's not that much in the fender wells, but stuff that I am concerned about, little things like these pinch welds, right now it's just surface rust. It hasn't really penetrated anything, which is good. So I'm gonna take this off with a, uh, kind of like a little sanding wheel to get it down before it gets undercoated. It's still not that bad, but like I said, you know, salt and all the stuff up here will quickly turn this into stuff that is very, very bad. So I'm gonna work on this section. Um, Alberto's still pulling some stuff off the rear end and then we'll go over the rear end and the little rust spots over there. But uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna start making myself useful and taking care of some of the stuff to get it good. So with all of that AYC active yaw control stuff, there's a little reservoir in here that house fluid to control the diff. Um, but uh, obviously we don't need it anymore, so more weight savings. When you're removing weight from the rear too, that's pretty noticeable because the back end uh, won't really like swing as much and the car will be a bit more direct. Quick status update. Uh, we just did a quick bumper removal on the car. Alberto tackled the front because uh, that's his thing. And you know you boy LZ got the back. So I uh, took the rear bumper off and had a little bit of trouble. Uh, <laughs> all the bolts to take the rear bumper off are hidden behind all this interior stuff. It's not like other cars that are fairly easy to remove bumpers, like a GT3 RS. Uh, if you look down in here, there's actually two bolts that me and Alberto struggled to find. 14 mil here and over there that held in this weird part of the bracket on the rear bumper. Um, Ooh, are great. What? It, what? Like, like, it covers my whole hand. Look at this. What fronts? I was handling on the front. What are you talking about? You have a pair of fog lights over here bigger than my head. You're so weird. <laughs> I didn't get the joke. Oh, I get it. I get it. You're funny. <laughs> they're not fog lights, they're something else. They're fog lights, okay? They're big, round fog lights. That's what he's into. Yep. And I'm into some nice, rusty brackets. That's my thing. That big fat tailpipe sticking out the bag, that's what you like, huh? Yeah, I like that big fat tailpipe. You like that big fat tailpipe? It's a little heavy for me though. I want to opt for a lightweight one. I'm more of a titanium tailpipe type of guy, you know what I'm saying? That nice exhaust you got there too, look at that. Yeah, dude, I love it when it's a little leaky, you know what I'm saying, brother? Sammy, you're breaking the car! Yep. What are you doing? Break in the car. My pride and joy. So, uh, if you guys didn't know, I should have showed you before. This is a very problematic point where the car was rubbing under compression. Um, the good solution would be to raise the car. The Adam solution is to hammer it in, but we should probably make sure this gets coated up here now that this is all bare and the paint's chipped off. But we've been having rubbing issues, as you can see, all up in here. So. It may seem a little overkill, but being that this is probably one of my favorite cars that I own, the fact that it stays up in the northeast, which has a lot of salt on the roads, and the fact that they're notorious for rusting out because Mitsubishi does so little undercoating, um, it's really important to me to have this thing protected. So these areas right in here where the arms mount to are the really, really critical points to worry about sanding, as informed by my Australian friends over at Keeley. So uh, that's the part where Alberta's been focusing with the more aggressive uh, wire wheel. Well, I've just been taking care of some of the surface stuff over on the actual pinch welds and some of the stuff going on over here in the gas tank area. A lot of it is just very, very minor surface rust, but I'm trying to be uh, as careful as I can with it all. So like I said, most of the focus was on those crucial areas where all the suspension points mount. But the beauty of it is, although we tried to get as much rust off as we could, um, once the undercoating's on there, it's gonna prevent any moisture from getting in and letting the rust keep oxidizing. So uh, I think we're ready to get this thing down on the dolly, and then we can pull off the side skirts and the fenders just to make the uh, actual spraying of the underspray a little bit easier. Although honestly, I don't know if we need to pull off the front fenders, Alberto. Yeah, I agree. What do you think about the side skirts, though? I don't know what it looks like under there, you know? Yeah. 
Lucky for us, this isn't Tommy's first rodeo and he actually has a chassis dolly. So we have it on the dolly. We're gonna roll it over on the trailer and then it's gonna go get undercoated tomorrow. He's got a friend. Um, I don't know his name off the top of our head, uh, but I will let you guys know once I do know in case you guys want an undercoating done as well. I know he did a really nice work on Tommy's car and uh, he's doing us a massive favor and getting it done quick for us. What? Yeah, watch that stuff. I just want to leave it by the door. So glad we time lapsed that because that was that was a challenge. We got it though. So Alberto, what time did we actually end up getting here? Was it like six ish or was it later? I think we got here around six, was it? Six? Well later or earlier you think? I think it was earlier than that. Maybe five? I think we because we barely missed traffic, so I think we got here around five. And it is now two thirteen. So about, I'd say, seven working hours. Yeah, 4.50, we're already here. Um, so I'd say about seven working hours. Got everything ripped out underneath, got it somewhat prepped for uh, it to be undercoated, and by that I mean some rust removal. But, I mean, what we did in a day would usually be more of a multi-day thing. So I think given that we got such a late start, uh, we wanted to do it earlier, but because we had to go pick up the Evo, it kind of cut into time a little bit. Um, that was sick. What do you think about that load-up job, Tyler? Pretty good? Wild, wild. We were lucky. I thought we were going to lose it a couple times there. It got sketchy. It's going to be fun to watch back that clip. Covered in rust and dirt and grime all in our hair and face and stuff. So we're taking a, a wipe shower before we get in the Alcantara seats. It smells great, Alberto.